while you're thinking about a TV. While you're thinking about a TV. While you're thinking about a TV. While you be thinking about a TV. What is different between how Denzel Washington says it and how you say it in English? Well, when I'm working with students, I often find some pretty noticeable differences between their English and native speakers. And I'm not just talking about pronunciation and placement, time, stress, pauses, clarity. These are often the things that make their speech sound less natural. Time. My students often think that fluency means speed and saying things fast, but then they find out that they're often already talking faster than native speakers, than people in the US. That's kind of interesting, right? So what are some ways that you can actually buy time when you're talking? Well, listen again to Denzel. While you be thinking about a TV, I got to be thinking about the roof or whatever else go wrong around here. Notice that he has slightly longer pauses between his thought groups. Also, his stressed words are held longer. These are things that he's doing that help his speech take up more time and things that maybe you're going a little bit too fast on. Now, there are certainly places where Denzel is speaking faster. Notice the part where he says, while well, you are thinking about a TV. While you be thinking about a TV. It has reductions though, because nothing is really stressed there. So it can go faster. You may also see that he's actually changing the grammar, right? He's not saying every single one of those words perfectly. Some of them he's actually eliminating. Now, I'm not here to get into Ebonics or African-American vernacular and dialect or whatever you want to call it. There is an important lesson here to take, though, for your own speaking. I think your approach to English may be too technical and too proper. When native speakers are talking, the stressed words they need to say are clear, but the other words don't have to be so perfect. It doesn't matter if you're not using the, entirely the correct pronunciation, if you're reducing the vowel sounds, if you're saying them faster. And a lot of times having a word that's less clear is perfectly fine because context determines everything. everything, everything. Here's a test. How would you say this sentence? Here's Denzel saying the same sentence. Let me tell you something about that. Fortunately, I can't hear you, but I am willing to guess that your version sounds a lot clearer than his version. But does that clarity make it sound more natural? That's a question I want you to really be asking yourself. One more test. How would you say this sentence? Before we look at our answer really quick, if you're finding this helpful, let me know by liking and subscribing. All right, here's Denzel's version. Are you gonna get Look, when you're listening to native speakers talk in shows and movies or just on the street, you're gonna find that words go missing, sounds get linked, stresses become harder to find. Let's actually talk a little bit more about that last point because stresses are really key to English. English is stress time, but one big difference I often see between my students and native speakers is that my students tend to have more stresses, more thought groups in their sentences. To give you an example of this, what words would you stress in this sentence? If you have five stresses or more, I'd encourage you to see if you can cut it down to four. Listen again to Denzel. While you be thinking about a TV, I got to be thinking about the roof or whatever else go wrong around here. I'm personally hearing a stress on you, TV, I, and roof. By having fewer stresses, you're giving yourself and your sentences more time to flow and develop a rhythm. When you have more stresses in your sentence, it means that you're going to have more pauses. It's going to be more disruptive to your listener and things like that. But maybe you actually don't really know what stress is. If that's the case, then I really encourage you to check out these videos.